It's time for Over There with Morella Rostroffer. Morella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. She is over there, I believe, in <coughs> civilized Switzerland. We will find out by saying Happy New Year. Hello, Morella. How are you? Hello, Jill. Yes, Happy New Year to you and to everybody that uh, is listening to us from Switzerland from the top of the mountains today um, a little um, uh, conversation about uh, Europe on this uh, beginning of the year. Um, So I will begin with uh, France um, because as you know Gilles Macron's uh, New Year speech was uh, followed uh, very attentively by everybody in France and outside of France because of the the unrest that took place um, at the end of 2018. And I think it was a very interesting uh, speech because it was a mixture between... Um, taking a stand and uh, reaffirming the fact that he will continue to implement reforms and he will continue to um, uh, try to improve the situation in France. But at the same time, it was also an acknowledgement that things have not gone completely right and that uh, many people uh, need help in order to have a more um, satisfactory and decent life. Um, So what can we really pick out of this speech? A few points. Uh, first of all, he did not name really the uh, gilet jaune, the yellow vest, um, while he was speaking a big deal about them in many ways, he did not name them. He, as I said before, uh, said that he would um, try to um, put order and contain uh, disorder in in France without complacency. Um, He warned the hateful mobs that are behind the yellow vest while he's making a real, very clear difference between the people who truly um, think that uh, some uh, changes uh, need to be made um, in uh, France. Others are just using the Yellow Vest movement in order to be extremely hateful and to spread um, messages against against Jews, against homosexual foreigners, politicians, police officers, um, everything that actually... um, Uh, should be uh, protected. And another very important point is the fact that he also warned uh, French people against fake news and anything that is not uh, real or true online. And he promised to tackle the issue. And I believe he's working on certain laws that would allow um, that would allow the government to take uh, fake news away from uh, from all this online uh, posting. I guess this sounds like um, a little bit of a useless war because as we all know, uh, while you maybe take away some fake, fake news on one side, uh, another side is opening up. So this is to be taken with a little bit of caution because it's easier said than done. But there is definitely the will to um, counter fake news and to be able to actually do something against it instead of uh, just complaining about it. He also acknowledged the fact and was very critical of the actual ultra-free market capitalism, which uh, he thinks that should be 
uh, more um, transformed into a responsible form of globalization in a protective Europe. And that would mean um, basically while uh, keeping uh, doing some reforms, uh, it would also uh, mean that uh, people that are uh, more uh, in danger would be more protected in a system that is um, sometimes uh, really uh, very ruthless. Um, he was clear, though, about the fact that um, this situation in France is uh, decades old, uh, clearly making the point that while he might be responsible for certain aspects of the, the actual crisis, he is not responsible of what happened uh, the last 30, 40 years. And this has been an accumulation of uh, factors that led to this um, uh, a very difficult uh, situation now with the yellow vest. He said that it's not realistic to one work less, two earn more, three cut taxes, four increase spending. So this, of course, is not going to go very well with uh, the yellow vest, but he, um, in a way, um, is the kind of president that uh, wants to improve things and acknowledge mistakes. Um, he certainly did some, but he also wants to remain realistic and a uh, big presence cannot be made overnight without uh, France making also a major, major, major effort in uh, on many levels. Um, that was the speech in France, and I'm going to link it uh, directly to the speech of uh, um, Chancellor Merkel in uh, Germany. Um, she was uh, maybe less under stress than President Macron, because, of course, this Yellow Vest movement um, has been a real strain on him and on France and on uh, France structures, and it's by far not finished. And while Angela Merkel has had her own problems and also acknowledged the fact that there is a big political divide in Germany, um, she also wanted to send uh, an optimistic message in terms of Germany taking on more responsibility, uh, especially now that the relationship between the US and Europe is a little bit tense. Also, she warns that climate issues, terrorism and migration cannot be solved alone. And she definitely um, want, would like at least to uh, the world to collaborate on these issues, to find global solutions as um, individual countries cannot do that on their own. She also would like to increase humanitarian aid uh, and development aid, which is by all means a very, very um, uh, intelligent way of tackle uh, the issues that we are all facing all over the world as um, uh, migration, for example, is very dependent on the situation in every single country. Um, humanitarian aid uh, would be the immediate aid, of course, but development aid is maybe one of the key uh, aid um, and would allow countries to strive on their own at one point, making um, these huge migration uh, waves less, uh, less necessary. Um, Considering the, the the let's say the social and uh, and economical um, aspects of countries, obviously now the 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 climate issues are some that are the most difficult to tackle because uh, that doesn't really depend on develop depend on development aid, uh, but more on uh, global. 
um, action against uh, climate changes. And as we all know, this is an extremely complex uh, matter when it comes to coordinate um, efforts all uh, around the world. Um, the only point that I found a little bit more scary in her speech were, was also her um, wish to have um, more money put into defense um, because um, indirectly, of course, it does mean that things have uh, changed um, worldwide in terms of defense and uh, while it's always put ahead as a more um, um, preventive a way of avoiding conflicts, uh, to invest into defense also means the possibility to um, one day use it. And um, obviously, uh, for Europe, the entire idea of the European Union has always been um, to hold together in order to um, avoid potential future conflicts. And um, I guess I'm not alone in hoping that we'll, that will also stay that way. Thank you very much, Mirella Rostrofer. Over there. My pleasure. <laughs>